Good morning if it is, good morning if it isn't, because today we're going to be modeling this coffee cup in Blender and learning a few tips and tricks along the way. Stay tuned. What's up everybody? Let's make a coffee cup. This is going to be kind of an introductory modeling tutorial, but not so much so that you shouldn't have at least a little bit of an idea about how Blender works, you know, how to select objects, move your viewport around and stuff like that. So let's get started. I have my basic scene set up here with a camera, a lamp, and a seamless backdrop. And I want to get those out of the way while I'm modeling. So I'm pressing M and I'm going to move those to layer two. So let's get going here. I'm going to go into my top view and I want to add a circle because a coffee cup, at least the one on my desk, which unfortunately is empty, is mostly circular. So Blender starts you off with 32 vertices. Uh, I don't want quite that many because I'm going to, I'm going to be kind of increasing the resolution with the subsurf modifier. Um, I like to use 10 for this and it's because it gives me a nice flat side right here and you'll see what I mean by that and how that's helpful in just a second. So now that we have our circle with 10 vertices, I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode, press E and then press Z to go straight up until it's looking about right. Um, something like that I think looks good. And um, you'll already notice it's the colors are kind of weird. It's dark on the outside and lighter on the inside. And that's because the normals are flipped the wrong way, which basically means a blender kind of thinks that, you know, maybe this is the inside and that's the outside, which since there's really no geometry to this yet, it's not necessarily wrong. But I'm going to press tab A twice to select everything and then press control N to recalculate the normals. And there's a button for that somewhere, but honestly, you should probably just learn the hotkey, like with most things. It's a little faster. I'm pressing tab back into object mode to kind of see what I got here. Looking pretty good, so I'm gonna hit one on my number pad to go into the front view, zoom out a little bit, press tab to go back into edit mode, and then I wanna create somewhere to put those handles. So I'm gonna press control R, and that's gonna create an edge loop. And I want to scroll up on my mouse wheel before I click a couple times. You can see I'm looking up here and down here for a good place to put that handle. So scrolling up and down, you can see in the bottom left down here is the number of cuts. Um, I think five looks pretty good. So I'm going to click and right click to lock that evenly in the center. So now we have the geometry we need to create our handle. Um, I'm going to press period to make that not so zoomed out. And now what we need to do is start extruding that handle. So I'm going to go to my face select mode here, select this one and this one. And then now in my front view, you can see this is why I wanted a flat side. So now I know I'm going uh, straight outwards, um, perpendicular to the surface of the coffee cup. I'm going to press E and it's going to go along the normal, which is straight out in this case, which is what I want. Let that go right about there, and um, it's not letting me select this edge face, so I'm going to go into wireframe mode by pressing Z, and then I can select it. So I'm going to press E. You can see again it's going straight out, um, but now I want to kind of move it, so I need to just click, press G to grab it, R to rotate it, and repeat this process a couple times. Another way you can do this, which works wonderfully for something like this, is if you just press control, or sorry, if you hold control and then you left click, it will extrude to right where your cursor is. And that's really handy. Um, now what I need to do is connect those faces there. I could do this a couple different ways, like most things in modeling. And right now I'm going to just select these vertices, one, two, three, four, Hit F to make a face, select these ones, F to make a face, and another way you can do this is just with the edge select tool. Theoretically it should be a little faster since you're only clicking twice, but sometimes I like to see those vertices to make sure I'm getting the right thing. You can do whatever you like. So now that that's all filled in, filled in we're starting to get our coffee cup, but we need to obviously add some thickness to it. So I'm going to go back into edit mode again 
and you could do this in edge mode but again i like where to see select mode so i'm going to hold down alt and right click on this edge here any edge you can see and that selects the entire edge loop very handy for modeling in many cases you'll need to use that so now what i want to do is um, extrude these inwards so i'm going to press e and I don't want to go any of those directions, so I'm going to right click. Those vertices are still there though, they didn't, it didn't completely cancel the operation. You can see if I press G, they're still there. So I'm going to press S, and that's going to scale inwards along my, you know, to my median point, which in this case is the center of that circle, so uh, that's perfect. So click once, it looks pretty good. And then I'm going to go into my front view by pressing 1 on the number pad, Z to go into wireframe, and then press E and it's not going straight down for us. So I right clicked, they're still there, and I'm gonna just drag that straight down along the Z axis. And something like that looks pretty good. And I'm gonna hit F to make a face there. If you were gonna be deforming this mesh, uh, you wouldn't want this big multi-sided, or sorry, it's called an N-gon when there's more than four vertices making up a face. So you wouldn't want that if you're gonna be deforming it a lot, but for what we're doing, just making a still model, it's going to be just fine. So now all I need to do is fill that in on the bottom as well. Again, I pressed Alt and right clicked on that edge, and now F will make us a face. So if you're making a low poly coffee cup, then you might be done with it here, but I want to smooth this out a little bit. So like I mentioned earlier, we're going to add a subdivision surface modifier. And um, that's over here when we have the cup selected, which let's go ahead and name that to cup. It's always a good idea to keep things named, especially once your scene starts getting kind of big. So with the cup selected, I'm gonna go into the wrench, which is the modifiers tab, and then add modifier, subdivision surface. And that's a very common modifier, no matter what 3D software you're using. That basically kind of takes all the vertices you have and, and averages them so that you're left with um, something that's smoother, which is exactly what we want here. You can see the handle is much smoother, and we've got some more definition around the outside of the coffee cup. So I want it to be even a little smoother, so I'm going to press this button here and change the viewport render or the viewport subdivision levels to 2. And we can go ahead and set this to smooth over here. You can see it was on flat before. That's looking pretty good. We've got a couple problems though. I'm gonna go into my front view and you can see our coffee cup would kind of wobble. You don't want that spilling hot coffee all over the place. So I'm gonna press tab. The reason it was doing that is because, like I mentioned, the subdivision service modifier kind of averages the points you have. So since there's no definition down here or really close to this edge, it's, it's just rounding it which is you know, not what we want, but it, it's all we've told it to do basically. So I'm gonna press Control R to add some more definition and that's adding another edge loop. I'm just gonna click and drag that down a little bit. And if we go into our front view, it's much better, but there's still a little bit of a curve here. So basically I wanna add another edge loop on the other side, but if I press Control R, it's not gonna let me select an edge in the middle there. So the other way I'm gonna do this is by going into face select mode, selecting this bottom face, and then pressing I, and that stands for inset. And that's just gonna basically you know, extrude inwards and essentially give us that edge loop we want. So now, um, if it's just sitting flat on a surface, this wouldn't be necessary because you wouldn't see it. But if you're gonna put this up in the air or something like that, you could make that little indent on the bottom of a coffee cup. So I'm gonna press E, and that's gonna drag it upwards. And something like that looks pretty good. And now we need to do the same thing on the inside. So if I go back into my front view again, press Z, I can see through it. You can see we're getting the same, you know, rounding effect. You might want that, I don't. So I'm gonna press Control R and make sure you're on the inside loop here. You can see it's jumping between them since we're able to see through this. So I'm pressing Control R while I'm on the inside, clicking, dragging down. And I think it looks okay with the rounded part down here, so I'm going to leave it just at that. Another thing you've probably noticed is we've got this weird shape going on here. And what that is, is a mistake we made when we were connecting the handle. We connected those faces, but we didn't connect the ones that were, or we didn't remove the faces that were on the inside, or that are now on the inside. 
you can see the rest of the handle is kind of this smooth tunnel here, but we've got these, it's, it's like blocked there. And that's because we have interior faces and that's um, the subdivision service modifier is calculating for that. And, it, and it's giving us these kind of weird artifacts. So I'm gonna press tab to go back into edit mode. And now you can really see them. Press Z and let's go into my uh, face select. Press X and delete that face. Another way you could do this, which there's only two here, so it's not really a big deal. But if you had trouble finding where those interior faces were or, or you had a lot of them, then this tool would be really useful. And we can just, uh, we'll, we'll press spacebar to search for it. And I have already searched for it. So if you press spacebar and type select interior, there, you got it. Click that and that will select the interior faces as you would probably have guessed. X faces and that's gone. You can also see we kind of made those close together so I don't need the extra edge loop. So I'm gonna right click, hit X and just delete that edge loop. So now it's a little more even around the curve. Coffee cup handle, a little bit funky. Do whatever you want with it. Um, you can make some changes. And I did C, this is my favorite way to select is circle select. You can press C and then you can scroll in and out to, to make this selection area bigger or smaller or whatever you want. So that looks pretty good to me. It's a little fat, but we'll leave it for now. And um, I don't want this quite so sharp around the outside. So I'm gonna add another edge loop right here. And that's just kind of give us a nicer thickness at the top of our coffee cup. So that's pretty much it. The model is done. And um, let me bring back my seamless backdrop and camera and lamp and go into rendered view over here. And I'll show you how to add a really basic material. Let's kind of, since we did model the bottom, let's kind of jump this thing up here. I'm pressing R twice to free rotate. And now we can see our we can see the bottom of our coffee cup. That looks kind of cool. So I want to use the, let's drag this over so we can see the nodes a little better. I want to use the principal shader. Um, so I'm going to go over here to the materials tab, press new to create a new material. And I'm going to kind of zoom out. There it is. And uh, I don't want it to diffuse. So like I said, I want to use the new principal shader. So I'm going to hit X to delete that. Now there's no material, so it's black. Shift A, shader, principal. And we'll let's drag that into the output here. So it's still just white. I want it to be shiny though. So let's drag this roughness down to maybe 0.1 or so. You can see now we're getting some nice highlights there. And you can change the color of this to kind of whatever you want. Um, and you're looking pretty good. And that's about it. I hope you guys learned something. If you did, please feel free to subscribe to the channel because you'll see the next video I do. And, and please give me a like so that more people can see what we did here and learn how to make their own coffee cups in Blender. Thanks, guys. See you next time.